I want to make something Billy Crystal clear right out of the gates. This isn't a review. This is more of a video on a guy just straight giving up. I got through 40 minutes of a two-hour film called The Killer, a film directed by John Woo, a director who at one point in time had some cachet to his name. But now I'm really starting to think he and a lot of other directors don't really care about the product they're making. They already made a name for themselves, they already have their huge mansions, and now they're just cashing checks to make sure they keep their nest egg for their family to come. Let's talk about the little bit I watched of The Killer and why you probably shouldn't. Before I dive into what will surely be a spoiler-free review, if you wouldn't mind diving into that subscribe button, hitting the like and notification bell so these show up in your feed in the future, I would appreciate it only though if you like what I'm putting out. If you think I'm lacking authenticity and passion about what I'm saying, kind of like the recent film The Killer does, that's fair. Don't subscribe, I understand. The Killer is a <clears throat> Peacock exclusive, that's a thing, so if you have if you have the cock, make sure to check it out because you're paying for it. It's rated R, it's over two hours long, and you will feel every single second of it. This film stars Natalie Emanuel as Z. She's gonna be carrying this movie on her petite little shoulders. I gotta say, Natalie is kind of like a new Jessica Alba to me. Absolute smoke show. Beautiful woman, stunning, and she does get to put on some different costumes and fight bad guys and whatnot. She's not in good movies. She's, I, I don't think she's ever been in a good movie. She was in Game of Thrones. But that means she was also in the later seasons of Game of Thrones. So even that becomes disappointing. And here, it, it's like, what are we doing with her as an actress? She's very pretty to look at, but she brings nothing to the table. She doesn't have the physicality of a role that requires it. And I don't mean, you know, physically she looks great. But she doesn't have that Charlize Theron type of presence when she's fighting bad guys. And it might not help that John Woo's filming this thing like he has no interest in all what's taking place. Omar Sy plays Say. I don't know this actor. I'm not really familiar with his work. He's fine from what I saw of him. He plays a cop who's rough and tumble. And this storyline, from what I can tell, is going to continue to jump between these two characters. It's going to go back and forth until they meet up. They're going to cross hairs. And I assume that they're going to get on the wrong side of each other. Sam Worthlesston. I mean, Worthington. No, and... No, I was right the first time. He plays generic boss guy named Finn. I don't know where this movie's gonna go, but if you have seen it, let me know if I'm correct. The two leads, um, they have kind of a mutual respect for each other. They're keeping secrets, of course, but they are gonna end up fighting at one point. There's gonna be a shootout, but then they're gonna join forces, get on the same side, and Finn, Sam Worthington's gonna end up being the bad guy. I have no idea, I promise you, I might be completely off, but just based on how lazy this script seems to be, I wouldn't be surprised if that's exactly where it goes. So what is the story of the killer as far as I know it? I don't know. Z is a kind of down on her luck assassin. She works for Finn. She hangs out in this church a lot, trying to find her way through this topsy-turvy world she lives in. She talks to her goldfish. And she's really good at slowly dispatching people. Because this is a John Woo movie, we are going to have slow motion. It's going to come at unopportune times. There's no rhythm or speed to anything anymore. This is the same John Woo, by the way, that brought us hard-boiled and a bunch of other awesome classics. This is no hard target, okay? This is no face-off. This is no broken arrow, even. Those movies have some style to them. They have some life and some energy. Shit, maybe this is a review. I probably didn't need to see any more than 40 minutes to tell you exactly what you're going to get. Really lame action sequences. The one I saw featured Z taking little pieces of a sword out of her dress, assembling it, and killing four or five people in a room. During this process, the lounge singer there falls backwards, hits her head, and becomes blind. Z's boss, Finn, informs her that she was meant to die too, so go finish the job. Z heads to the hospital where she's going to IV drip some poison into the blind lady. That's classy stuff. Real classy, Z but she's intercepted by the cop guy and they're gonna have an exchange. Z's gonna feel bad for the blind woman and I'm guessing at some point she's gonna try to save her. And now she's at odds with Finn, her boss. Oh, it's all coming together. It's all really coming together well. This movie has no soul to it at all. Again, John Woo's very good at bringing his own style to the table. There were doves, to be fair. Right when the film opens, there's, there's doves flying through the church. 
But this film is shot on those shitty digital cameras, so nothing has a cinematic quality to it. It all feels very artificial. It's all 4K, 8K, however many K they need it to be for me to go, okay, I'm done. And it wasn't much after the hospital scene where I said exactly that. Okay, I'm done. I made it 40 minutes into a two hour film. Is it possible it gets amazing at some point? I don't think so, but sure, anything's possible. And so maybe I leave it here. The killer was a waste of my time because it did not impress me at all. I've seen so many movies, I kind of have an idea of how things are gonna play out and if I'm going to be impressed with anything going forward. If a movie hasn't hooked me within 40 minutes, nothing's gonna change that's gonna go, oh, oh man, this, this won me over completely because I wasn't invested at all to begin with. Had this gone to theaters and I wasted money on a movie ticket, sure, I'd sit it through, I'd pout the whole time like I did with The Crow, but I'm at home. This is a peacock movie. I'm checking it out in the cock and I'm not liking what I'm seeing. So I walk away. I have other shit to do in my life and I think you do too. So I'm trying to save you from it. I'm trying to help you. This isn't me hating on a movie, it's me appreciating you and your day to day. But let me know, did you watch it? Am I wrong? Does it get amazing? Did I not see the brilliance that was unfolding in front of me? I watched Silent Night, John Woo's movie last year, and that was, Silent Night's all right. I'll say that, Silent Night was all right. It kind of loses me in the last act, but it was a pretty solid ride. This felt like he had to do it for the studio. Like he signed a contract, it's kind of a two for you, one for me situation, and this is one of them that he owed them. I don't know, speculation of course, and I'm sick of it. These streamers almost always kind of suck. I don't want to waste time on something that they don't have any real investment in to begin with. Let me know your thoughts though. Leave a comment if I'm wrong, if I'm right. Like the video. Again, please think about subscribing. I'm not going to bullshit you. I have no one to answer to. That's the beauty of having a full-time job and this as a hobby that's become basically a second full-time job. I love doing it, I love talking film, but I don't need to go easy on anything. And I refuse to when I see the kind of garbage that Netflix, Peacock, Amazon Prime are just crapping out the door. And yes, there's good stuff, of course. Typically it's on the TV series side of things. I feel like more energy is being put into that than these one-off movies. But I appreciate your time. Thank you for listening and watching. Hopefully I see you again. If you really like my commentary, I have a brand new second channel, Adam Does Rants. I mean, it's not brand new, but it's only been going for a couple months and that's a lot more comedic. It's me just ranting about first world problems, talking about the pain and misery I deal with on a day to day, hoping to get you a laugh or two. If you love what I'm doing, I am a one man operation. I have a Patreon account, patreon.com slash Adam Does Movies. You can become a member there if you want. There's a dollar tier, there's a $10 tier. You get access to a bunch of exclusive videos and I would really appreciate it. All right, hopefully I see you soon. Take care.